Hey everyone, it's Norm here from I Am Cars. Joining me on the streets of Paris, France. Take a look at this, a bird just flew right over me. And today we are gonna do some very Paris, Parisian, Parisian things, including we're gonna go check out an exotic car dealership, check out the Eiffel Tower, and the world's largest Louis Vuitton store. I'm on the way, let's go check them out. And these are what the streets of Paris look like, you can see. Old cobblestone, beautiful architecture in all the buildings. And of course, it just has that typical European vibe amongst everything. The building, the cars, the roads, the architecture, the people. You got new Westphalias, you got all kinds of cool stuff that we have just don't get in Canada. And I actually see right up here, Paris Prestige Cars. And here at Paris Prestige Cars, we got a Maserati Levante out front. And they've got a beautiful restored, this is a 1970s Porsche 912, priced at 80,000 euro. So like 120 Canadian. And coming down here, got the Ferrari SF90 Spider, black, black. Priced at 640,000 euro. Here we got the, I think this is an 812 GTS. Yeah, 812 GTS. Priced at 550,000 euro. And the Rolls Royce Cullinan. Brand new 400 kilometers, 540,000. Pretty cool. I checked out their website. They actually have a ton of other crazy cars, but. I'm assuming they're store off site. And another rare spot, a Brabus G-Wagon convertible. Very, very, very cool. All right, I've found the largest Louis Vuitton store in the world. And this thing has to be about, I'm gonna say six stories high. Look at this, all embossed with Louis Vuitton. So walking down the other side of the world's largest Louis Vuitton store that is at least six stories high, and there's a line of like at least 30 people to get in this place. I was gonna go in to venture around, but I'm gonna say not anymore. I don't have the patience for that. Also, Ferrari California T definitely looks like a rent. Oh yeah, it's a rental. Cool. Might be fun, but I had my fun in Monaco with that. So it's a giant Louis Vuitton trunk. I'm gonna actually cross the street so I can get a better view of it from the other side of the road. It's pretty crazy, it takes like an entire city walk up. Here's a better view of the giant Louis Vuitton trunk in the world's largest Louis Vuitton store right there. That is absolutely insane. And that right there is actually the Arc de Triomphe, which took 30 years to build, built by, uh, I think Napoleon. All those people up there. Maybe we'll have a walk down there and see if we can go up it. Here is the Arc de Triomphe. A little up close. You can't actually go up there. I think you've got to go down through here to get up there. And I think it's about an hour or two, so I'm not going to do that. And you got to buy tickets, but it's pretty impressive. I'm going to say it looks pretty crazy up close. So I think you go underground to get to the Arc de Triomphe. So I might as well walk over there and see what it's like. Pretty cool. And we are up close at the Arc de Triomphe. Look at this. So I actually can't go up there without buying a ticket. But look at this crazy architecture. All hand carved in the 1700s by Napoleon. So another crazy thing around the Arc de Triomphe, you'll see this massive traffic circle. And the crazy thing about this is at this intersection, we'll call it an intersection, there's actually 12 roads that converge into one. So you see like cars just stopped in the middle of the intersection because they don't know what the hell is doing. This lady, look at this. Here's just a prime example of traffic at, we'll call it La Arc de Tarage. Look at this. Look at this, this is hilarious. There we go, she got through. But it is absolutely mental. You got buses just cutting people off like, <laughs> like you wouldn't believe. It's unbelievable here. 
at this traffic circle. People crossing and they just, yeah, well, I guess they don't have a choice to, but to stop for them. It's pretty well. 911 Targa GTS, nice. And I saved the best for last. This is the Eiffel Tower at night. I was here during the day, but I wanted to save it for at night. And every hour on the hour through the night, this lights up with some crazy sparkles, something like 20,000 lights. So we're gonna hang out here. And in just a moment, I'm gonna show you guys the lights of Eiffel Tower. Just like the street lights lit this town Like a fire in a blaze, gotta burn it down Can't be afraid to leave this out We got this far, don't know how And the next morning, just enjoying my coffee while overlooking these really cool streets of Paris. It's a really cool view to wake up to every morning and quite unique from seeing what we see here in Canada. And we got my dad getting inside our chauffeur car off to the airport with our driver. It's a VIP car. service. It's absolutely incredible. Mm, thank you, <laughs> Very informative. And this is just us going through this little uh, tunnel sped up on the way to Charles de Gaulle Airport, which is the one airport that flies out of Paris, France. Controversial opinion, but I did not like Paris. It was, um, I'm not going to say unsafe, but it was a bit of a dirty town, and I've heard this from lots of people, and I probably wouldn't go back. Now, off to the airport, where we are wheeling our bags in to go through security and wait for our boarding of flight, which now we're on board. You can see here from Paris, France to Calgary, Alberta. I'm seated in 1A. As usual, I like to sit in row one. This is our infotainment system for the flight. You can see the local time was 6 a.m. in Calgary. We were leaving in the early afternoon from Paris, France, about eight hours ahead of time. The infotainment system was, I don't know, pretty decent on WestJet. I'd say like a seven out of 10, lots of movies. And this was flying over, I believe, Iceland or Greenland, about not quite halfway home. You can see we were above this very thick layer of cloud and it was quite, quite the scene, that's for sure. And a little bit later in the flight, you can see here, distance to destination, just under 6,000 kilometers. There's all kinds of super cool views on this interactive map. You can look around all different uh, sides of the airplane, like a POV, or you can just have a standard map. So you can see here, like Earth from above. This one was actually super cool. It had all your ground speed and your altitude. And that's my dad getting up. And a little bit later in the night, here I am, cozied up, reclining my pod. So I was gonna have a little nap, which I think I had a little nap on this flight. It was probably about maybe a couple hours long, which felt good. Although when I got home, I wasn't feeling great. I was pretty sick and put on a movie, Space Jam. And just like that, next morning, I am back in my Lamborghini driving the roads of Calgary again. All right, if you enjoyed this video, if you could do me a huge favor, click the like button down below, check out some of our other videos on the channel and be sure to subscribe. It literally takes one second and it helps our channel out grow immensely. I actually like that one the best. <laughs> the final one's the best.